branching yourself out so you can move into the cybersecurity space where there's opportunities for technical and consulting roles. I find a lot of people focus too much on like the, the fear of what if I don't land a role? What will I, what happens if I can't upskill or can't get there? Hello everyone, welcome back to the Cyber Evolution podcast. Thanks for joining us yet again. I'm Adam Hewitt, the CEO of Cyber Evolution, and today I'm joined by one of our superstars here at Cyber Evolution, Lachlan. Lachlan, how are you going? Yeah, good, brother. Good to finally be on the podcast after so many episodes. It is. Thanks for coming on. It took us, what, 40 episodes or so, but I wanted to get you on, Lachie, because yeah, you've been a career advisor here for quite some time, for, for quite a while, and I wanted to get you on, but you're always too busy helping people change careers into cybersecurity, and you don't have any time to speak with me. It's a hard life. Adam. <laughs> Somebody's got to do it, right? So... Thanks for coming on and, and taking out the time, taking your time out of the day. Um, we usually do have students on here, as everyone knows, successfully placed students that we help transition into cybersecurity, explaining their situation and their journey into the industry, which is cool. But I wanted to get another perspective um, from somebody else, someone else's journey into cybersecurity, and also your perspective. You speak to so many different people each and every day who want to get into cybersecurity. There has to be some common threads, some common traits, some little nuggets of gold that you see in people, what makes them successful, not even just successful, but also what's what makes them willing to make the change. Because as we know, 99% of the success of this is making the decision to actually make the change, actually doing it. So many people talk about it, so many people think about it, but they get stuck in analysis paralysis and nothing happens, okay? And we'll talk about this in more depth. Change is very uncomfortable. A lot of people don't like getting uncomfortable and that stops them from growing and it stops them from changing their situation. Um, so I'm really interested to pick your brain in helping people um, get out of their comfort zone, but also if you can actually, whilst having those conversations over the years that you have, really pinpoint some some traits um, that you see each day in, in people that you know, yep, this person's going to be a really good fit for cyber evolution and, and the cybersecurity industry. Before we get into all of that, guys, I just want to give our new listeners of the podcast a bit of an overview of who this podcast is for, who Cyber Evolution are. Um, we are finding, as I say, each and every week, more and more people listening, which is great. Um, so Cyber Evolution, we are Australia's only dedicated cybersecurity training and placement institute. We specialize in finding people their first entry-level job in cybersecurity. Over the years we've been doing this, we've helped thousands of people get into it. But it is a very misunderstood industry. We get questions all of the time like, how can I change careers from a builder, from a dentist, from a boat builder, from anything at all, right? An accountant, an engineer, and change and get the right skills to land a job in cybersecurity, okay? And it is really about education, not only educating our students to get the right skills in cybersecurity, but educating the general public in what Australia needs right now, and that is more people that know the basics well to keep Australia a safer place, okay? So it is a little bit of a mysterious in, um, industry, and this podcast is to really just educate people on what it's all about and how you can land your first job in the industry, okay? So if that resonates with you at all, then this is the podcast for you. All right, Lachlan, let's get into it. I want to start from the beginning, like where I do with all of our students. Let's talk about your journey uh, into cyber security. Tell us a little bit about yourself, your background, um, how long you've worked for Cyber Evolution, etc. So yeah, it's probably a bit of a weird pathway into cyber, which I find now as we're talking to a lot of people, it's never just a straight path. Um, but funny enough, look, I'm, I'm in kind of the, the Sydney era in New South Wales. Um, I actually did a, a Bachelor of Nanotechnology at UTS there. Took about four, four and a half years. And... Honestly, I just decided I didn't want to stay in a lab for the rest of my life. You know, I see people out there doing the same job over and over for like 30 years. And I just couldn't put myself in that situation to even start that. And I think there's a big culture that we go around where if you finish school, you have to get into university, like you have to get a degree. Being on the other side now, I realized I didn't have to do that. So rather than, I guess, worrying about, okay, well, I've just spent four years doing this degree. What can I do? I went weirdly enough into coaching and consulting afterwards. Um, I worked with my uncle that's big in the space, teaching others really how to market themselves, right? How to actually sell 
their their gifts when it comes to helping people lose weight, right? How to, you know, market these fantastic things people can do. And that's where I found the love for, in essence, what I do now. So big on the consulting side, you know, cybersecurity can go the technical, but I'm very much maybe a people person. So after that, decided to, to head to the cyber, and that's where I joined you, Adam. That was about a year, year and a half ago now. And now I enjoy the consulting side of cybersecurity. So, you know, a lot of people get that question, right? Do I want to go technical? Do I want to go consulting? I don't think you need to know until you actually give it a go. And once you actually experience that and go, actually, wow, I actually really enjoy my day today now. And now it makes the work so much easier. Wouldn't you agree? Most definitely, right? And, you know, a lot of people when asked that question, what does an entry-level role actually look like for you? What do you want to get into? It's almost impossible to know straight off the bat. And this is, that's a journey that our students go through for six months, eight months. And we have career advice and speak to them, speak to them each and every week about kind of extracting what you're going to be good at, what previous transferable skills that you've done in the past in some of these roles that are going to suit um, your entry-level cybersecurity role and then tailoring your application around that. And so for everyone listening, I have spoken about this before. What Lachlan is touching on here is um, the two pathways into cybersecurity. Entry level, there really are only two. There are a technical pathway or a consulting pathway. It's quite simple. Um, and saying that the decision to go down one or the other isn't simple and it's quite complex and we go through a process with our students. Once you're in that um, pathway, whether you choose to go down the technical pathway, which is more attention to detail, in, you know, in the desk, in, say, for instance, a SOC analyst role, doing the technical work um, and the consulting pathway is client-facing, um, you know, governance, risk and compliance, going into an organization and saying, here's where you're strong, here's where you're vulnerable, here's where you're not compliant, and you're a lot more client-facing outside of the desk and um, building relationships, obviously suited to what you, know, what you do. Um, and it's about extracting what you've done previously to what's going to suit you best in one of those roles. So anyway, yeah, I think, sorry, you on there? I was just going to say Adam, that it's almost like, it doesn't sound like it, but you do have tangible skills no matter what background you have. And the one thing that seems to stop a lot of people is they just, they just don't pull the trigger because they're worried about the job at the end of the tunnel before they've even tried it out and actually seen what do I enjoy and what I don't. And it's just a shame, right? That people could have such a big career change, but they're too focused on the end goal that they're not taking those small steps. Yeah, exactly. And they also have a, they're focusing on what they don't have rather than what they do have. This is a big thing. I speak to our employers of choice all of the time. What they're looking for, the tech, the basic level skill set you need to get an entry level cybersecurity role, that can be, yes, we can give you your certifications, but you're going to be really well supported in a role for your first six months, shadowing people, um, not even being client facing or doing the technical roles for your first six months, really. And you're going to be learning how to do that. That stuff is pretty quick to learn, six to 12 months, and you're really off and racing. The stuff that employers are looking for now are your transferable skills, your professional skills that you've learned for 10, 15, 20 years in previous roles, working well with others, working well in teams, in professional environments, communicating, right? Having a results-based mindset. All of these things you can only have if you've worked professionally before, and that is career changes. Not somebody that's just fresh out of university that has never worked in a work environment before. All right. You need to um, be able to focus on what you have rather than what you don't have. I think it's really important to mention. Okay, great. So tracking back to your journey. So you did a four-year degree, uh, quite a technical degree by the sound of it. Very much. Um, yeah, yeah. And really decided that it wasn't for you, um, which happens for a lot of our students. It happened for me too. too. I did an education degree and realized I didn't want to be a teacher stayed in education, but didn't go down that specific pathway. Um, and are now finding, you're finding anyway, that you wanted to go more so down the consultant pathway and, and you actually enjoy speaking to people and helping them make the change, right? Massively. I think it's getting to that point in anybody's life and just realizing it's okay to not be happy with where you are, right? Even though you put in work, I mean, I've seen people put 10 years into a, a career, other people spend right, four, five, six years doing master's. And I think the, the worst part is that people just grit their teeth and do it because they put that work in when it doesn't have to be the case at all, right? Like they could change their career, but it's very hard for us as humans, right? Just to switch that break and go, all right, well, I did do something, but I could actually make a bit of a move here and actually make my life for me and my family 
I mean, a lot better. Yeah, definitely. And if you don't think it's possible, if you're a career change, you're going, no, I can't, can't do it. I want you to listen back to the previous 37 episodes of this podcast and listen to every single one and then tell me you can't change careers because, you know, the proof is in the pudding, right? It can be done with the right strategy, the right skills and the right partnership. All right. Anyway, um, let's get into why you decided to take up the opportunity and work at Cyber Evolution. Yeah, I mean, it's it's quite simple. Cybersecurity is just an industry in which it is never the same each and every day, right? Now, I could only consult, I talk about the consulting side, but the conversations I'm having with you, each and every person, it's never the same whatsoever, Adam. The, the stories I hear, the people that are wanting to make a change, their background, um, not a single person is exactly the same as the next. And I think that's really great in a role here or, or an industry where you're going to, in essence, work 10, 20, 30 years. If you're not living in that Monday to Friday or you're just living for the weekend, I'm sure you, you've already kind of maybe experienced that before, Adam. It's just not enough. Like it is not just worth grinding it out, you know, hating Mondays, looking forward to the Fridays because that's, in essence, right, a third of our lives that we're there. And I wanted to make the most of it. And with cybersecurity, the progression, as well as the pay, right? A lot of people don't want to talk about money, but it's essential. And especially with the economy up and down, that you need something here that can support you, support the family. You're there. Yeah. I think that's probably the three biggest things that I hear our students say pre-getting placed and then after getting placed is they want more job fulfillment. They want to feel like they're making a difference and come home and kind of be excited to talk to the family about what they've done that day. Um, I mean, some can't, I guess, talk about everything that they've done because of the security clearances. Um, second would be earning more money. I know that's what I want to make preface here that it is not the only reason you should get into cybersecurity. Um, if you're after it just for a quick fix, earn really good money for a year or two and then move on, um, that's not the kind of people we're looking for, right? We partner with our placement partners and we need to ensure that you're in this for a career, not a job. And there's big difference between somebody who's just clocking in and out of a job and who actually wants to build a new career for themselves. And then the third thing, obviously, is the big one that I always bang on about is the career progression. Being able to go from entry-level, mid-level, advanced level in about sort of five to six years. We've got one of the students recently, um, Tim, uh, was it Tim Jensen, who was, yeah, he was on the podcast not, not all of that long ago. I think it might have been about three or four weeks ago. Um, he's now going on his, his third different role, his third promotion in under a year in cyber security. It's not bad, right? You know, in any industry to move up that quickly in a year is crazy. Not going to get it. Even I spoke to one of the ladies, uh, Swati, who we placed down in uh, an organization down in Melbourne. She was in a SOC analyst role and for, for nine months, complete career changes. She was in retail sales. If you go back and you can listen to the podcast, um, she's now managing people. She, she's now gone from retail sales into a analyst into a SOC manager. It's just, it's unbelievable. That for me is the most exciting thing. And obviously from that progression, you get paid better. And from that, you obviously can feel fulfilled, more fulfilled as well. So it's, it's all, those are typically the three main areas that, that we see. Now you touched on it before. What you like as well is you talk to people from all walks of life, all different backgrounds. As I said before, you know, teachers, pharmacists, you know, boat builders, um, engineers, any different industry, right? Tell us about some of your favorite stories of people transitioning into cyber. I've got mine, although I probably shouldn't pick favorites, but it's just, <laughs> when I'm, what? it's hard not to, it's hard not to, right? Yeah, it's hard. I mean, look, some of the stories, I, I, amazing, right? Like, I mean, I sometimes talk to nine people a day, right? So the different stories that come across, um, it's absolutely phenomenal of people's lives, what they've been through and what they want to do for a change. Um, a couple that really resonated with me, um, I had one guy named Peter that he, uh, I think he joined a couple of weeks, a couple of months back now, something of that nature. But ultimately he, um, you know, he is working really hard, right? He, he was almost what we were, what he was saying is the ATM for the family. Like he was out there day in, day out working so that his family could have a, you know, a great lifestyle, but he had no time for them, right? I mean, the... The things he felt, right, were like, you know, just not being there with his kids, right, like missing out on those moments. But there's nothing he can do. As some people say, it is what it is. Some people grip their teeth in. I think to see that transition from, from him, right, of like noticing, you know what, after about 10, 12 years of this, I've had enough, right? 
I've got tangible skills. I know I can do more to still make that salary for the family. More importantly, do something I enjoy and have time with them as well. And he's absolutely going fantastic now through the studies. And I've got no doubt that he'll easily land a role because with what he's done in his previous field, there's just no doubt that he's going to do fantastic, right? That's all we're, that's all we're looking for. Like people who are really motivated to make the change, obviously they've got to enjoy cybersecurity. We don't really want anyone within our program who is just doing it again for those surface level reasons. You've got to enjoy learning new skills. But just really, that's what the industry needs right now is just really good people who are in it for the right reasons. As you said, we've got um, so many people right now who are going through the studies who are just so motivated, loving the, what they're doing. And once you decide to make that change, you see the students, their shoulders just relax and they, they can just enjoy the process of enjoying, um, of learning these new skills. Right. Right. That's pressure. I, just, I think it's like that's pressure off your shoulders. I think of also a lovely lady, Haley, that was in the childcare space. Now, I'm sure if anybody knows the childcare space, hard work, right? Long hours. And much like each other, she's a single mum, right? So she's got kids to look after. She's between a rock and a hard place, right? When you're looking to try and progress in your career, right? Do really well. But there's a limitation of what you do in childcare. And you've also got to look after your kids. What do you do? And so she's come to us here. She's been absolutely smashing the studies. And I think she's going for job placement very soon. But it was just that change in her ability here to go, you know what? Again, I've had enough of what I'm doing here. There must be something better where I can really enjoy what I do as a career, but not have to sacrifice so much on my life to do so. Yeah, amazing. What I like about the vast range of people that we help and where they come from and is it is all very, very different. Everyone's story is different and everyone's journey into cyber is very different. It can be, you know, what pops into my mind is Saman, a lady who came to us, has been wanting to get into cybersecurity for 10 years. It's a long time, right? A decade. So many other people would have just gone, you know what, I'm going to give it up after five or I'm going to give it up after eight. But Saman did everything possible and it just wasn't working, right? And I remember speaking to her and she said, look, this is really a bit of a last, last ditch effort here. This is my last shot at it. Joined our program and roughly about six to seven months later, landed her first role and she is now, that was about a year and a half ago and it still resonates with me. She is now just going from strength to strength to strength. And so Saman, if you're listening, shout out to you. I think you've, um, you're an amazing student and you, you know, you're obviously thriving now in the, the role that you've wanted to be in for a decade. And then the other end of the spectrum is someone like Daniel who you know, was in construction and he landed a role within 60 days of joining us and really didn't know whether he wanted to be in cyber to start off with, sort of thought it was interesting did some research, looked into it further and was like, yeah, I want to change roles and this cybersecurity thing sounds like it's right up my alley and got into a role linked and two months later, he's in a different career, um, which is equally just as cool, right? You've got someone who wanted it so long and someone who decided, yes, I need to make a change, acted quickly and has changed his life. And both are, I think, equally good in that sense, right? Like both had goals they wanted to achieve and they just took different pathways to get there. And, you know, whether it takes 10, 10 years or two months, I think the ultimate goal is to, in essence, make it, right? Whether it's getting that flexibility to get that fulfilling career to help people. If you're not there yet, it's the question of how can you get there from where you are at the moment? And what separates, like you speak to like, potential candidates, right? They come to you, have a conversation first. We educate them on what we do and we really want to find out whether it's going to be a good fit for them or not. Can you tell pretty quickly if they're going to be a good fit or not? Yeah, usually within, I'd say, look, five, ten minutes at most of having a conversation with somebody, I know right off the bat. And I'd say the, the first really big thing is those that will be successful, right, are just people that want to be themselves, right? They're honest. They're happy to tell you about their situation and, and really what they're wanting to change. And those, those people there are the easiest to help out. They're the most successful, right, because they're open to change. Right, they, they're accepting to go, you know what, I'm not happy with things at the moment. What can I do to move along? And our job as consultants, right, is not only to teach them these fantastic skills, but to help them land roles here that will also help them when it comes to work-life balance, right? And those small little things that, you know, is not the end-all be-all for a role, but changes your life completely when you're doing something you enjoy and you're not working 60, 70, 80 hours, 
And I think it's really important in the conversations that you have that people are open and honest because sometimes cybersecurity isn't for them and we let them know that, right? So you have to have the conversation with somebody and they have to, you know, essentially, I guess, break down some of the walls that they put up and actually be honest with you and say, yep, this is what I'm looking for. This is why I'm looking for it. Is this going to be a good fit for me? Right? And most of the time it is if they're honest, but sometimes it's not. So it's really important that, um, that people are honest with you, right? I think it's more important in the sense of you know, we're here to have honest conversations rather than to tell you it's all sunshine and rainbows. Because think of the disappointment of going through all that upskilling and you're not the person for cybersecurity. It'd be even worse. So our job here is that even if you're not for cyber, we can at least guide you in the right direction to go somewhere else where you will enjoy yourself. Or if you are, that's when we can look at what you need specifically to make a, make a move like that. Definitely. Because what we do is a two-pillared approach, right? We have our students that we look after and we train. But we also have our placement partners, right? And they are partners of ours that we feed our student talent into. So if we're putting people into our placement partner organizations that aren't a good fit, that aren't in cybersecurity for the right reasons, our placement partners then invest six to 12 months of time and money into them. And they then leave because they realize cybersecurity is not for me. That looks bad on us. Our placement partners leave us. That pillar of us falls down and we're just another training organization, right? Which is not, not what we want, right? And it hurts everybody else too, right? Because everybody wants to land those roles. So if we lose those pl placement partners, that means everybody's losing out for that fact. So we have to keep that level here so that everybody wins. Yep, exactly. All right, and so let's move on to the final question that I always ask all of our guests of the podcast. What are your, you probably knew this was coming, so you prepared for it. Uh, what are your top three tips for somebody that might be sitting on the fence? They might've had a conversation with you or they're just, they're thinking that, yes, this thing called cybersecurity is for me, but obviously maybe a little bit of fear is, is holding them back. What would be your top three tips? First off, I'd say the first tip, it's okay to be scared, right? Um, I know you've already mentioned it on plenty of the podcasts here, Adam, but a career change is uncomfortable. If it was easy, everybody would do it and there would be not enough roles in cybersecurity, but it's quite the opposite at the moment. And that's one of the biggest things I, I see people holding back is they, they just have that fear, right? But I think it's okay to have the fear and it's more just having that willingness to learn is how someone becomes super successful. Just open to really checking it out. And that kind of leads on to my second tip is just do it. You know, it sounds like a, a bit of an obvious one, but what's the hurt of doing something like this? Like upskilling, right? You know, branching yourself out so you can move into the cybersecurity space where there's opportunities for technical and consulting roles. I, fo I find a lot of people focus um, too much on like the, the fear of what if I don't land a role? What, will I, what happens if I can't upskill or can't get there? And I'm sure you can agree, Adam, nearly all of our students are finishing those certifications. They're landing roles. The only thing holding them back is themselves. It's literally putting, you know, letting life get in the way, giving ourselves some excuses, which everybody does, and it gets put on the back burner and nothing happens. And I think you can say that, right, because you're living proof of it. You did a four-year degree in nanotechnology. You paid tens of thousands of dollars. Anyone who would have then been in that situation, a lot of people would have been like, ah, what's the safe option here? I've spent some money. I've spent some time. I'm just going to stay in that career. What happened if you did that, right? You could be miserable, right, in 10 years' time. You decided to, I guess, take a bit of a risk, go, you know what, it's not for me. I'm confident in, in my skill set and myself, and I'm going to go down and do what I want to do and chase that, you know, which is important. So it's important to note that you're living proof of what you say there. Um, anyway, tip three. And number three. The biggest one, and I, I kind of touched on it, but it's just focus on the skills you have gained over the years rather than focusing on what you don't have. A big thing, and I think it's just human psychology. We look at that new job. You look, you know, go and seek to LinkedIn and you look at what roles are available. You see all the different certifications, the experience they expect, and you go, oh, no. I mean, Adam, this is way too big. This is a big gap I've got across here, skill-wise, to get there. When, when we talk to our employment partners, they're not too worried about the technical abilities, right? Because it's our job, right? It's the employee partner's job to teach you those skills. What they care about is, are you a problem solver? Are you a leader, right? Can you work well as a team? Are you efficient with time? Can you communicate? Like simple things that no matter what career, whether you 
still been in university, right? Or had a 10 year career. You have tangible skills here that are very impressive. And we just need to work it in a way that you're ready for cybersecurity. And that's what will get people roles, right? Once they start focusing on what skills they have and they just upskill a little bit more from there, they are landing these roles. They're being honest on these interviews and conversations and they are progressing so much. Like Tim Jensen, right? Three in one year, absolutely crazy. But I'm sure you'd agree. He's one of the most honest guys you've ever met and it's a reason why he's doing so well. Yeah, exactly, mate. Really, really good tips. I think the one that stands out for me and it is an obvious one to say, uh, but, but it's something that I would say almost 90% of the students that I have on here and I ask them this question is say, just do it. And that's, that's literally it. What is the worst that can happen? If you want to do this, if you're interested in it, if you've been thinking about it for a long time, if you've done your research, what, you know, stop the fear from holding you back and just get into it because we will let you know if it's a good fit for you. And if you jump into this, you know, the opportunities out there are, are amazing. And as I said, Go listen to all of the podcasts that I've done over the past year and you'll, you'll hear some amazing, amazing stories. Lachlan, thank you so much for spending uh, time with us today. I know you're extremely busy, especially today. Friday's always a bit busy for us. Great, it's always a busy day. Yeah. yeah. Thanks for taking the time you know, out, out of your day. And I'm sure a lot of people did get a lot of value out of this. And I've just had a thought of how we can add even potentially a little bit more value to this podcast. And I'm going to add... Um, Lachlan's booking link in the bio of this podcast. Okay, so for anyone listening to this podcast and it's, you know, you might have been listening to it for some time, you want to have a conversation with us and figure out whether this thing called cybersecurity is for you or not, then book in through the link in the bio um, and you can have a conversation directly with Lachlan. And uh, I think that, that, you know, you get, again, they get a lot of value out of that. So I'm going to add that into the bio. If you guys did get value to, the, to this, uh, uh, have value to, of this podcast, like, comment, subscribe, give us a review. Um, you know, it really, really helps. And it's great to see that this podcast is growing. Okay, if you want to know a little bit more detail, as I said, about what we do, all you need to do is just book in through the link in the bio description. Thanks for listening, everyone. Okay.